When I was a little kid, my brother and I used to take guitar lessons in a suburb near Vancouver. The store was called Burnaby Music. It was a tiny little store. It had room for maybe 40 guitars on sale. And there was always a cat named Alice that slept in the window. Downstairs, there were three small little rooms where we took guitar lessons. My brother would always go first, and I would wait outside the little room, really bored. And I remember this one day, he came out from his lesson, and he told me what he learned. He said, when you play minor pentatonic, all you have to do is move one, two, three frets, and suddenly you've got a whole new scale and a whole different sound. I was blown away. He, he demonstrated it for me, and I thought, wow, that sounds cool. And then I went home and promptly forgot about the whole thing because, you know, I was a kid. Of course, I have since figured it out. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you will never forget it. And we're going to use this trick to take any lick in minor pentatonic and move it into major pentatonic and back again. So this is how I teach it to all my students, and you're never going to forget it. It works like this. I call it the first finger pinky rule, because if we start with our first finger, we put it on a root, let's say D, and we play our easy shape, then we have D minor pentatonic. But if we take our pinky and we put that on that same D note, and we play easy shape from there, we have D major pentatonic. It's a completely different set of notes, but the amazing thing is that we get to still use the same shape that we've been using probably since we started learning scales on the guitar. So first finger is minor pentatonic. That's for bluesy, rock and roll kind of mean sounding stuff. And pinky is major pentatonic. That's for when we want a sweeter sound. Now keep in mind, we're in a major key, right? So let's just hear what D major pentatonic sounds like. I'm gonna play D major pentatonic, and then I'm gonna play D minor pentatonic, and we'll compare what the two sound like against a track. Really cool, right? They are very different sounding scales and we can use one or the other whenever we're in a major key on some pretty basic chord sequences, which is what we get usually in rock music and pop music and the blues and folk music and country music. Because what we're doing right now is we're playing over a major key. Well, if we're playing over a major key, theoretically, we should not be using minor pentatonic, right? Major, minor, the two don't really go together. But that's the sound of the blues and bluesy rock and classic rock. But it's only one part of that sound, and we want to be able to access also a much sweeter sound. And we get that with major pentatonic. So now, forevermore, you're going to remember how to get from one to the other. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to move from one to the other. So now, if I said to you, play a lick in minor pentatonic, and then take that same lick and alter those notes so that it fits in a major pentatonic, you might say, whoa, 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 that's hard. i got to calculate what are the, the sharps in that key, and then i got to change a minor third to a major third. And yes, we can go about it that way, but that certainly is the hard way to do it, right? The easy way to do it is to visualize these shapes using the first finger pinky rule. So let's try that. Let's take a simple classic minor pentatonic lick. Let's say we're gonna bend our favorite note to bend. Our favorite note to bend in easy shape is the third finger of G string, right? In this case, in D minor pentatonic, it'll be 12th fret of the G string. And then we're gonna walk down to the root. That's a very simple lick, right? We're gonna make it more complicated in the end. Let's transpose that to major pentatonic. 
I don't have to even calculate what the notes are really, right? All I have to do is first finger pinky rule. I imagine pinky starting there. I imagine the shape and here's the notes. But here's the funny thing is that is no longer the root. And that's maybe the trickiest part of this. It's not that landing there is going to sound bad, but it's going to sound different because the roots are in different places, right? Once we shift to do this little trick, this first finger pinky rule trick, we're shifting such that the roots are in different places under different fingers. Now that we remember first finger pinky rule, we also need to memorize where those roots are. So let's change the lick. Let's, let's hear it again in minor pentatonic. We remember that it goes and it lands there because that's a D. And we know that's a D, right? But now we're gonna shift, I'm imagining pinky rule, imagining pe uh, major pentatonic, and I'm gonna play a similar lick. But I'm gonna go back to that note. Why am I doing that? Because that's a root. And we wanna know where those roots are because those roots are gonna really help with our phrasing. It's gonna make our phrasing sound better. It's gonna make our licks sound more connected to the chords underneath, the key underneath. Let's hear the lick against the jam track. I'm gonna do major pentatonic first because that's generally the better order to do it, major pentatonic and then minor pentatonic. I'm just gonna play that lick in major and then I'm gonna play it in minor. That's major, minor. That's minor, Woo, major. There's minor. I kind of changed the rhythm there to make the phrasing fit because in order to land on the root with major pentatonic, I had to go back to another note, right? I had, I wanted to go back to that one. In a minor, I didn't. I want to end on that one. So it does take a little practice, but you're just going to memorize them, right? Just like you memorize shapes. It's really easy. We want to know that the root is not only the one that we start and find the scales with, but that we have roots elsewhere in the shape, right? There's a root, there's a root, there's a root. That's for minor pentatonic. And in major pentatonic, it's quite different, right? Pinky's on root. And then way up here, first finger on the G string is root. And then that one's the same, right? Cause that was D, D. On my website this week, we're gonna have a free cheat sheet on this first finger pinky rule that you can download. And on my Patreon, we're gonna have tabs from this lesson, plus this jam track, plus bonus practice tips, all on the subject of first finger pinky rule. The links are below. So let's try a longer lick. I'm gonna do a lick in major, and then I'm gonna do a very similar lick in minor. I might alter it again slightly because I might want to change where it lands. Major. So they sound very different, but in fact, all I've done is shifted to the major or shifted to the minor. Now here's the next amazing thing about this first finger pinky rule, and that is that there's a blue note that exists also in major pentatonic, and it's in the same spot. Now it has a different function, but it's in the same spot, so it kind of doesn't matter. Just to remind you, first, where is this first blue note in D minor pentatonic, right? I put my first finger on D and I walk up. There it is right there. And we visualize where that is in the shape. Now, it's in the same spot for D major pentatonic, or the same relative spot, we could say. So I put my pinky on D instead. And there it is already, right? Because I'm starting on pinky. I'm not starting here on first finger. I'm starting on pinky. And there it is, it's in the same place. I walk from D through the blue note to the root again. Let's do it in minor pentatonic from the root through the blue note to the root. It's pretty different, right? It's a different set of notes. And in major. So now I'm gonna add that little blue note sequence to the beginning of this little solo that we're creating in major and then in minor. I'll do that kind of run and then I'll do a similar bend like we did before, major.
likely to switch from major pentatonic to minor pentatonic in quite the way I'm doing here. This is for, you know, illustrating what it sounds like. But we are very likely to use both in a solo. The more typical way to do it is to switch to minor pentatonic on certain targets, shall we say. Now, I've talked about some of those other targets in some of my other videos, but in this one, what we're going to talk about is just when we want to raise the intensity, we can switch to minor pentatonic. If the chord sequence is simple, we can actually do it on any chord. It doesn't really matter. But in this case, we're waiting for the greater intensity that we want. And this jam track starts out pretty cool and easy. And we'll notice that there's a big change to the drums in the background. The drums start hitting more of the ride and they're louder and there's a bit of a drum fill right before it. We're gonna use that moment, that intensity to change from the sweet major pentatonic to the more rockin' minor pentatonic. I'll improvise something here to show you what I mean, and I'll tell you when the switch is happening. Here's major. how easy it is to create sudden, really different harmonic changes in a song or in a solo. And all I had to do was use easy shape. I didn't even have to change out of easy shape. I just had to use my first finger pinky rule to find the different major and minor. But we can move out of easy shape, right? Because just as minor pentatonic shapes have a sequence from easy shape, shape one, to extension shape, shape two, right, to shape three, to shape four, funny B string, and shape five, major pentatonic works the same way. And of course, it's in the same order. So just as if you've memorized all your minor pentatonic shapes, you have already miraculously memorized all your major pentatonic shapes because they're all the same. The only difference is the roots are in different places. But that's okay, it's not that hard to memorize. And you can use your ear on it for now, right? So let's find a very different place to play major pentatonic and minor pentatonic. We're gonna stay in the key of D, but in this case, we're gonna find the root on the A string. There it is there, right? Fifth fret of the A string is a D. So if I have my first finger on that D, what shape do I have? Anyone thinking? It's funny B string shape because Funny B string shape has its root on the A string first finger when we want minor pentatonic. There's the funny B. Right? A lot of people call that shape four. I call it funny B string shape. Now, here's the amazing thing. First finger pinky rule. It still works here because first finger was here for minor pentatonic. Put pinky on that same note, D, right there. And play funny B string shape from there. We get D major pentatonic. So now we are going to walk up D major pentatonic and then we're gonna play some licks on D minor pentatonic when we have that intensity target that we hear in the song, when the drums do a fill for us and then start playing louder, okay? Here's major. usually when I do this is that students will say to me, oh, why just that minor sounds so cool. I really love the way the minor sounds. So then why don't I just play the minor because I already know how to do that. But you know, what's making the minor pentatonic sound so cool there is that we have the contrast of major pentatonic before it. And when we do that shift, it's what makes audiences go, 
oh yeah, that sounds so cool. It's that harmonic change that makes the minor pentatonic sound so cool. And without it, yeah, minor pentatonic is still cool, but it's not that cool. So just as the blue notes in the easy shape of minor pentatonic and major pentatonic are in the same relative position, that is also true for funny B string shape, for shape four, right? So in D minor pentatonic, with first finger on D, the blue note is right here. And for major pentatonic then, pinky on D, it's right here. It comes earlier, right? Because we're starting on the pinky already. So that blue note's right there. Easy. So let's see if we can put it all together. We're going to do some major pentatonic and funny B string shape, and then I'm gonna shift up to major pentatonic and easy shape. And then I'm gonna shift to minor pentatonic easy shape. Here we go. number of other techniques that I think is very important for all of us guitar players to learn and I'm gonna put a video on the screen here that covers one of those techniques for you. You could also check out our Patreon where we have loads more similar content including soloing tips, practice tips, uh, scales tips, chord tips, and master classes on songs. So you can check that out, the link is below. My name is Blue Morris and I teach guitar lessons here in Vancouver, Canada. I'll see you in the next one.